Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at the Swam Solo Strings by Audio Modeling. Now, I have done videos before, I did actually three videos on their brass releases. So, those are available for desktop, also for iOS. These have been available for desktop for a while and just came out for iOS. There are four instruments in this strings collection for iOS viola, violin, double bass, and cello. I'm going to let you hear today what they all sound like, but first we're going to start with the viola. And before I start, there's just a couple of important things I want to say. One is that I've got five free copies of any Swam Solo Strings app to give away to subscribers to the channel watching in the first couple of days of release of this video. If you look at the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comments section, all the details of what you've got to do to win and when the winners will be announced and so on are there. So that's the first thing I want to say. Second thing, I'm going to concentrate on what these sound like, how expressive they can sound, how realistic they can sound. I'm not going to try and go through all the different aspects of the interface and things like that. There's a manual, you can read it for yourself. I'm also going to be playing these with an MPE controller. Personally, I'm using a Roly Seaboard. Um, I mentioned when I made my videos on Swam Brass that there are lots of different options for playing these. Um, I'll just briefly recap that. So obviously you can use MPE controllers, or you can also use the play mode here in the app itself. Uh, GeoShred makes a very good controller if you have GeoShred Play or GeoShred Pro. They, that also makes a very good controller for this. Or, for example, you can just use any regular MIDI keyboard, whether hardware or virtual, and then you could use something like an XY pad, a virtual XY pad like Rosetta XY, for example, to control expression on the screen of your iPad while playing your virtual or hardware keyboard. But I'm going to be focusing on using an actual hardware MP controller. I think it's a very enjoyable and expressive way to play these. Now, one cool thing, by the way, worth mentioning is that Atom Piano Roll now has an update where you can actually record MPE and you can import MPE and you can export MPE files as well, MIDI files. So this is amazing. This is a real, real game changer for me. It's going to make it a lot easier for me to use my MPE instruments in my AUM sessions. So this is brilliant. If you haven't checked out my video on Atom, well worth checking out. It's a great, great companion for these uh, SWAM instruments. Okay, so now, as I've said before in previous videos, I'm not a keyboard player. I can play keyboard a bit. I'm also not a violinist or anything like that. But what I'm focusing on here is just expression. So let's get Adam going here. What I'm going to do while it's playing is I'm going to change around a few different little things here. For example, I may change the play mode uh, from bow to pizzicato and things like that. Um, so just pay attention that things may change. Again, this may not be something that you would necessarily do in the same way in a musical performance, but I just want to let you hear some of the capabilities. Okay, let's press play here. So here we're in bow mode. But now I've switched to Pixicato. Or this one, this Lenio. That can be so beautiful. We're back in bow mode. So I just played this in using my Rolly Seaboard.
Like the pizza cutter. Got an almost Chinese feel, a little bit like an Erhu in some parts of this. Okay, I'll stop that there. So, let's, before we move on and look at the other instruments, let's just take a quick little look at the interface. So, first of all, we've got a preset menu up here, and we can choose different types of sound. Um, if I just use this on-screen keyboard here, we'll hear you'll hear there's a little bit of difference. I quite like the bar talk one. So these will use things like slightly different EQing, different reverb, and things like that. Uh, if we go into the play screen here, we can see that we have a keyboard that we can play on. And we can do pitch bends by just using the X axis. And then we can assign the Y axis to different things like bow pressure. Or, for example, vibrato depth. This is harmonics. Oh, there we go, it's working. That was not working for me earlier for some reason. Bow position. So that'll make the pizz pizzicato sound different as well. Now there's also a tremolo that you can just turn on or off. Put it back to bow mode for that. So you may want to use this sometimes, but in general, it's probably not really going to be what you're going to do. You're, you're, you're going to want to have this set up to bowing sensitivity, I think it is. Or one of these, let's see, let's see. Bow pressure. Anyway, you're going to want to experiment with things. Now, a lot of the time what you'll do is use the expression control. So you can do tremolo with the expression control. And then you can do vibrato by moving left to right. So we've got a few things in there. Now we've also got choices of different instruments. Here we can see our audio represented on the screen. It's also got this cool virtual bowing mode. And you can set that up to be bipolar if you want. So it'll be silent in the middle. Now, I'm not very good at playing these things on screen because that's not the way I play it. I play them using my MPE controller. It's a totally different technique. So if you want to develop these kind of techniques, whatever way you're playing this, you're going to have to put in a bit of time to get realistic sounds out of it. Um, another thing worth mentioning, you click up there 
you get some MIDI learn options that open up, and those will be different depending on the screen you're on. Uh, again, just check the manual for details of how to do the MIDI learn. Now, if you press again on that, let me show you that again. So if we press again on the presets menu, we get a thing that comes up here that is very important if you're playing with controller, because here you're going to want to choose what will match your controller, like here, Seaboard, for example. Or if you're using a wind controller, you may choose this. Linstrument, you're going to choose this, and so on. So these things are very important as well. Now, let's have a little listen to the violin. This is not a tune, I'm just kind of playing this like the way you would pick up an instrument in a, in a shop and just experiment with expression. So again we got our different presets and stuff. The Mozart one is quite nice. I want to show you something, let's just use this. So we can actually control the bow polyphony, for example, you can set it up in a way that it'll play two strings at the same time, and there are a few different options here and you can check the manual to get the exact details for how those will behave. We also have a few controllers on this screen, like here we can do pitch bends here if we want. We can control vibrato here. And of course you could set all these up with MIDI Learn. You also have a thing here for the bow or pizzicato position. And I love how it's represented on the actual instrument on the screen. So we've got this Sordino option which is kind of like a muting. and bow pressure over here. And again, we've got expression here. So we get a few things that are accessible in different ways on different screens. And here are velocity. Some panning. And our main volume and so on. Um, then we also have, <coughs> excuse me, other things up here. Uh, for example, there are things we can change here to get a little bit of finer control of various aspects. Again, if you're playing with an MPE controller, a lot of these things will not be important because you'll be playing these by the way you're touching your instrument. You can see also there are some things that are locked. Audio modeling have said these will become available as in-app purchases at some point. I haven't explored them in this, but when I explored them in the brass apps, I found that the things that were not uh, exposed yet were not that important. Even the way these are with these things locked, they're still incredibly expressive instruments. Here, for example, maybe the amount of rosin, or resin, I think that's pronounced, is it? Still on your bow, and so on. So... Some things, um, th this for example is not locked, it's just not accessible at the moment because we haven't got pizzicato selected. So things that are grayed out but don't have locks, they are accessible, it just depends on other settings in the app, but things that have a lock are not available currently and will hopefully become available when in-app purchase for these things is added. But I would point out that the strings came out, sorry, the um, the brass came out some time ago, and in-app purchase has still not become available for those. I don't know why. Um, I, I would like it if audio modeling would just be clear about when those are going to become available. I think it would be nice for users to know that. Again, just some things like random bow amount and so on. Uh, 
if you're playing with an MPE controller, these really won't matter because you'll be playing expressively anyway. But for some people playing on a regular keyboard, some of these things may be things that they wish they had. We have over here also different settings related to MIDI and stuff. I don't want this video to be long, so I'll let you consult these things in the manual yourself. The manual is uh, available on their website, I guess, also. So even if you haven't bought the apps, you can go and check out the manual yourself. These also may still be on open beta. I'm not sure. So you may still be able to try these for free. They were on open beta, but I'm not sure if they are anymore. Okay, so now let's go and listen to the cello and... Uh, oh, well, actually, before we do that, let me also just remind you that these can be really cool to put some effects on. For example... A lovely bit of delay and plate reverb. Lunar Lander has not come out yet, but it will soon. Put a bigger reverb. So, I feel that a lot of musicians might think, Ooh, I have no interest in playing violin and so on. Or this doesn't suit my style of music. No. If you like ambient and experimental stuff, these can be just absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to play with. Get all kinds of crazy stuff going. For example, Quinta is a really nice app to combine with these. Because we can add an octave down, an octave up, and a fifth. Really nice. So when it comes to adding effects, the sky is the limit. Okay, let's move on. Actually, as a little interlude, I'm going to let you hear a very short one minute audio example of doing something experimental with some of these. So if we're looking at the cello, all the things that we talked about about the previous interfaces 
will apply to this. But I just want to mention a couple of things about the interface. First thing is, when you first open the apps, they will often appear in this kind of size. And what will happen here, when you click this MIDI button, you'll get this message that you've got to expand the window. Um, so then double click usually will open it up to the full size. If it doesn't, and sometimes it doesn't for some reason, then you're just going to have to drag it to the full size. And it's only when it's opened up in this full size that you'll be able to access this MIDI and this, uh, right, the MIDI mapping and the MIDI presets for your controllers thing. So, yeah, that is worth mentioning. Also, I went into this in the brass video, but there are really cool things here where you can have a lot of control over your setup, over your setup of different types of curves and things like that for controlling with external controllers. This is really, really cool. But again, I went into it before. I won't go into it again. And it's all explained in the manual. So, um, yeah, so make sure that you get the window to the right size if you want to get access to MIDI mapping. And so then we'll find, again, you know, similar things, bow polyphony and so on, harmonics, fing different fingering and so on, and we'll find that we have different access to things on different screens, access to a lot of the same controls, but in different ways. You get the idea. Again, we have different presets. So let's just start with playing something. Again, I've just recorded something into Atom. Makes it a lot easier for me to talk to you while I do things rather than having to play and talk. So we're on the cello here. I want to give you a range of, you know, what it can sound like low, what it can sound like high, and so on. Playing with different kinds of expression. Let's bring it back to the start there. Again, switching to Pixicato down here. Again, we can control the tone. Mostly you're going to want to keep this on auto, I think. crazy with low pressure. Again, you could map that to something like MP timbre. You 
have up here effects, EQ, and reverb controls. Now again, you might want to put some effects on and do something interesting. Some reverse delay. Or not, you may be a purist, it's up to you. Okay, double bass. So this is pretty cool, right? We've got this walking bass preset. Love this. Let's just move this up. So you get an idea of what it sounds like at different ranges. Just mention everyone, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to the channel already, well, it's well worth subscribing to. I may be biased, but many others agree. <laughs> Atom 2 is such a useful app. Check out my video on that if you haven't done so. I will be making a new video also to cover some of the recent updates because this app has had so many updates since I did my first video like two months ago, even less than two months ago. Okay, now let's um, listen to double bass that hasn't been treated. Oh, let's see what do we have here, yeah. This is pretty cool if you want to beef things up. Kylum beef. It can also be pretty cool to put a delay on these things. That one's not particularly set up well, but you get the idea. Now let's listen to our last example. So just a more bowed double bass. Again, I'll let you hear. different pitches.
and that's as high as it goes. So, I think these are wonderful, really, really wonderful. Sometimes people ask me if I had to pick one, which one would I pick? Ah, you know, I seriously can't answer that. I think it depends on you. I'm very fond of the viola, but I also love the cello and I love the double bass as well. I like the violin. If I if I personally had to choose, I'd probably go for the viola over the violin. If I had to choose between cello and double bass, I don't know. That would be a really hard choice. Um, do remember that these will be available as a bundle. Currently, they're only, at the time of making this video, they're only available as individual purchases. That is because Apple has not approved the bundle yet. They're also on an intro price. They're cheaper than they will be. I'm sorry, I can't remember offhand what that price is. You can check that on the App Store. But they are at a maybe 30% off price or something like that. And I'm not sure, again, when that intro ends. But uh, you can check out the details on the App Store. Hopefully it will give dates and stuff there. But I do remember that the bundle, which contains all four apps... The intro price is going to be about $65. You know, for instruments of this caliber, I think it's well worth getting. Uh, these are all different enough to make it worth having all four of these. And as I've mentioned, you don't have to be trying to emulate classical music or anything like that to get enjoyment from these instruments. I personally, as someone who enjoys ambient, experimental, that kind of stuff, these, also the Swam Brass, I have just enjoyed using them in all kinds of creative ways. I think they're fantastic instruments. I highly recommend them. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, folks.